This is a short demo of stability analysis in ADS 2021. Today I'll introduce you to a technique called the TOMOS method, which offers a rigorous global analysis of stability without suffering from a lot of the drawbacks of the other techniques. And I'll show you how you can use a set of WS probes in your circuit in ADS to quickly and easily perform a TOMOS stability analysis. One note, I'm making the workspace that I'm going to show in this video available to download for free at the link below. So why use a technique like this rather than something like K-Factor? Well, as I described in a set of videos that I made on the subject, measures like K-Factor aren't always accurate or rigorous. If you want a more detailed explanation about why that's the case, check out the link to my stability video series, which is also in the description below this video. Now, in that series, I outlined two fundamental rigorous techniques which can be used to analyze stability. Normalized determinant, which is really an extension of Bode's return difference, and driving point in minutes, which also originated with Bode. Now, both of these are really useful, but normalized determinant, if done properly, is global, while driving point analysis is local, meaning it's only valid for the node you're analyzing. The challenge with the normalized determinant method is that it requires access to the intrinsic nodes inside of your device, and you actually need to have the ability to toggle them off, which isn't always practical. Also, for large circuits, for NDF, the matrix map can get large, and the information you get as a result is more of a pass-fail than it is an insightful look at your circuit. So normalized determinant, it's a really nice method to use, but sometimes it's not practical. Around the same time the NDF method was introduced, there was another technique presented by Atomo, and instead of turning off the active sources to stabilize the network, he proposed bifurcating the network into two interconnected blocks, and one block contains all the active parts, while the other block contains the feedback. Tomo was able to show that if these two blocks were stable by themselves, then you can analyze the interface nodes which to connect them together in an iterative manner, and you can use that to determine the overall stability of the system. So the advantage of Tomo's method is that you don't need to go inside of the transistor blocks to turn off the sources, and you don't need to compute large matrix math. And there are also the results, which are really loop gains, are quite meaningful in terms of implying the root causes of stability problems in your circuit. Essentially, the biggest problem is that it's extremely tedious to implement a TOMOS method. It requires circulators and isolators applied in an iterative manner. And as the number of interface nodes between the networks increase, the brute force required to do this analysis becomes rather overwhelming. So to illustrate this, I'll review a TOMOS method on the original circuit that he described in this paper, which was a parallel operated amplifier that could be induced to have an on-mode oscillation with a resistor. So here's the circuit that he used in the paper. And now since there are two transistors with grounded sources, we can bifurcate this circuit at four interface nodes. These are the transistor IOs. And I need to have one analysis per interface node. And to do that, I need to make four copies of this original circuit, or I have to run four separate simulations. Now, if there are more interfaces, obviously you need more copies and the analysis gets more complex. So first, let's start out with the top transistor input. To analyze this, I need to apply a circulator at this node and I need to terminate it. If you watch my other stability videos, you'll recognize that this is very similar to the OTS test loop gain method, where a unidirectional gain was computed around a feedback loop. Okay, so that's the input node. Next, we need to move to the second interface node, which is the top transistor output. And before I do that, I actually need to go and replace the input node circulator in this with an isolator. And then I need to add an additional circulator to the output. And one important point, this circulator needs to point consistently with the first one. So uh, in other words, since the first circulator pointed into the active network, all of the other circulators need to also point in the same direction. And that means I'll flip that so it's pointing back at the drain of the transistor. So that's interface two. So now we'll move to interface node three. This is the bottom transistor's input. And before I do that, I, again, I need to replace that previous circulator with an isolator at the, uh, the top of the first uh, uh, transistor. And then I will add a circulator pointing into the bottom transistor's gate. And finally, for node four, I'll repeat this, this process. I'll repra uh, replace that prior input circulator with an isolator. And then I add a circulator pointing into the bottom drain. Now, the nature of these configurations means that each termination will compute a loop gain. For example, the loop gain for interface node four would be S44 here. All right, well, when I run the simulation, the result is a series of loop gains, and these are plotted on a polar plot. And to assess stability, we look for clockwise encirclements of the one zero point on all of the gain terms. 
And you can verify that this indeed matches uh, Otomo's original work. It shows an oscillation on the first input node around 7 gigahertz. Well, that analysis was kind of a lot of work for a relatively simple circuit, but I've got some good news. In ADS 2021, you can use WS probes to greatly simplify this analysis. WS probes measure bidirectional impedances in a way that's accurate under feedback, and the probe outputs can be used to compute a whole bunch of different stability metrics for large and small signal simulation. There's more information on uh, WS probes in the videos, which are linked below. So let's take this Atomo circuit and set it up with WS probes. To do that, I'll just need to add probes to the transistor nodes. And like with the circulators and isolators, it's important here to have all of these probes pointing in the same direction with regard to the active devices. So in this case, I'll have the L terms all pointing at the transistors. And then I just run the simulation on this single circuit instead of four different circuits. Now to compute the results, I take the WS probes and I put them into this function called WSP loop gain Atomo. And the output is a matrix of the loop gain terms. So you can see here that the results from the WS probes match the original curves, and these curves match, again, the work that was originally done by Atomo. So using WS probes, you can apply this method on an arbitrarily complex circuits. No source toggle or large matrix math is required. So what I've shown is just one of the many improvements to stability analysis that were made in ADS 2021. For more information, you can check out the release notes at the download page on the Keysight Knowledge Center.